seven artisans have established themselves as a reputable but still budget friendly brand a while ago. I have always been a fan of their photography lenses and got really excited on the news of this new full frame cine lens lineup called Spectrum. I have said this many times before here on my channel, I love 50mm focal length. It's one focal length that I always come back to and one that I shoot 90% of my professional work with. This 50mm cine lens is available in pretty much all full frame mirrorless mounts. L mount, Sony E, Canon R and Nikon Z. It is a fully manual lens as expected, there is no electronic contact with the camera and it is as expected very budget friendly. So, if you'd like to find out more about it, see more samples shot with it, find out more about its build and features, the price and what my final thoughts are, keep watching, don't skip and hopefully I'll answer all of your questions in, in this video. Quick disclaimer, this lens was sent to me by 7 Artisans for this review, but as always I was not asked or paid to say anything specific about it and this is my honest and 100% unbiased opinion about this lens. The other two lenses in the series are 35mm, which I have reviewed recently as well, so please check that review out as well, and the 85mm, which I'm sure I'll be making a video about very soon too. These three lenses, this set, are called Spectrum, and although they are all different size, they all have the focus and aperture rings in the same place, so you don't have to readjust your follow focus position in the rig when changing between these lenses. This, just as the 35mm, produces that vintage lens look. It is sharp when it matters, it's not perfect, but that only adds to the character it delivers. T2.0 aperture is wide enough for superb subject to background separation, but also safe enough to dial the focus manually easier. Talking about T-stops, I'll let my friend Anson explain it to, to you in more detail. What's up, Pav? Thanks for having me on. I do want to give everybody a brief explanation of F-stop versus T-stop without being a complete nerd. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. F-stop is measuring the focal length of a lens by the diameter of the iris or the aperture. And so that does give more room for inconsistency between lenses. You may have an F2.8 lens on a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and an 85 millimeter, and because that focal length is being divided by the iris, that exposure is going to be inconsistent between the lenses, even though you're at f2.8. Now, the way that t-stops are measured is by the aperture or the f-stop divided by the percentage of light being transmitted to the sensor. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know enough about percentages of light being transmitted to the sensor, but I will tell you, since that equation doesn't involve the focal length, you do have the possibility of the 35 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter all being the same exposure at a certain t-stop. And so why that's important is because when you're filming something and you go to do a lens swap, you don't have to compensate for the exposure change. And so hopefully that gives you a bit more understanding of f-stops versus t-stops, or maybe I just confused you even more. And for that, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Back to you, buddy. Thanks for that, Anson. Make sure that after watching this video, you also check out Anson's review of this lens and his channel for more filmmaking related content. I am a hybrid shooter. I shoot photos and video very often at the same time. And when I have to focus manually with pretty much any current photography lens, it is much harder, more unpredictable and more unreliable experience in comparison to this. I found that using this lens or any of these Spectrum 7 Artisans lenses in the real world situations was totally different experience than using any photography lens for filming and manually focusing with better. It delivers better results and I felt that I was much more in control and achieving more consistent results with it as opposed to photography lenses when focusing, manually focusing. The image might be a bit softer around the edges, wide open, but is it really that important when shooting with wide aperture lens as this? The bokeh is good and creamy in certain situations, but generally I felt that it might be a little bit too busy more often than not. It's just part of the look these lenses provide and the one thing that really defines the optical character of them all. The overall performance is good for a lens in this class. Chromatic aberration, take focus breathing, take yes but less than the 35 millimeter in my opinion focus breathing is not tragically bad it might not be a deal breaker for some but yeah it's there if that bothers you the aperture closes only to t16 unlike the 35 millimeter lens that goes all the way to t22 minimum focusing distance of 48 centimeter 
about standard for 50 millimeter lens and decent to get close enough to your subject but not macro like for sure generally speaking a good performer it struggles more in the difficult lighting conditions like artificial fluorescent lights or or mixed lighting not unusual for lens like this at this price built really nice thing about these lenses is that they are built like a tank chunky all metal construction with built-in gears on aperture and focus rings really smooth movement on both of these it feels very well assembled and built with the chunkiness comes the weight it weighs approx 700 grams depending on the mount not exactly feather light but not bad for a cine lens at all filter thread is the same as the other two lenses in a series 82 millimeters no weather ceiling, no switches, no frills. The numbers seem to be painted on, not etched like with a lot of more expensive cine lenses. There are these threaded holes around the lens, a pair on top and bottom and a single one towards the mount uh, at the bottom of the lens. They are I don't really know to be honest with you I really thought they, that they were for attaching the lens support when lens is used in the rig but I can't find any lens support that uses screws to screw it to the lens if you know let us all know in the comments uh, on the comments below also something I don't usually mention in my reviews is the packaging this is really nice and snazzy giving that feel of quality and luxury but on the budget price this 50 millimeter is the cheapest of the three and retailing for 389 pounds here in uk or 379 dollars in us probably the cheapest or one of the cheapest 50 millimeter cine lenses that you can buy that makes it very affordable to a lot of beginners or anyone who wants to have a cinema lens for occasional use and without spending a ton of money on it the fact that it actually delivers okay and decent quality makes it an awesome value for money at this price it could be more of the spur of the moment impulse buy and one worth the risk to just try it out conclusion it's not a perfect lens but the imperfections make it a little bit cooler give it more character like vintage lenses do it's totally usable and the lens that might push your filming and color grading skills a little bit further to achieve the results that you want not a bad thing it's very well built and the low price makes it more accessible and affordable to more people who want to use cine lens but without remortgaging their house or selling one of their kidneys i recommend it but only if you take on board that you get what you pay for and this is pretty cheap it is one from the set of three so check out my review of the 35 millimeter the link is in the description below this video and in the near future in my review of the 85 millimeter the third one i'll compare all three of them quality picture quality wise side by side for now this is it from me i hope this video was in some way informative or entertaining if it was please give me the thumbs up follow me on instagram for more photos and videos from all of my reviews and thank you for watching and i'll see you next time